Check out Paddy's new kicker feature. If you fancy your team to run riot, add a kicker to your bet. And if your team win big, you win bigger. Paddy Power, you beauty. Hello there, welcome along to the Racing Post Football Postcast. The panel today consists of me, Bruce Millington, him, James Milton, him, Mark Langdon, and over in Ireland from Paddy Power, Ed Quigley. There are five really, really good Premier League games which we're going to talk about in depth. All sorts of other stuff going on this weekend. The season is really hotting up. And also Champions League is back next week as well. So we'll get some of the best bets for that. We'll start off with the six questions to each and then they get to answer the one they wish they had been asked. Mark Langdon, start with you. We mentioned the Champions League just there. Uh, a couple of games next week. Is it four games that it kicks back into yes, life? Is, yeah. uh, we've got Benfica v Borussia Dortmund, PSG Barca, Bayern Munich Arsenal and Real Madrid Napoli. Who's the best bet out of those? Well, I, I quite, I think mean, Napoli to qualify against Real Madrid uh, could be the one. I mean, Napoli scored seven in Serie A uh, last week against Bologna. This is obviously a tougher test, but they have definitely got the forward firepower to cause... Real Madrid, uh, a Real Madrid that's not full strength, not playing at their absolute peak of their powers. I think they've got the potential to give them a really good game. Um, who are the Napoli danger men these uh, days? Well, I mean, you've got Callion who plays on the right, Insigne plays on the left, and Hamshik plays behind uh, Dries Mertens. Uh, Mertens plays like a false nine, uh, been the, the revelation in Italy this season, just been overtaken in the sort of leading scorers by Dzeko, but he's having a, an amazing campaign. They've definitely got the forward firepower at the back. I'm slightly concerned. Kula Bali is an excellent defender. You know they can get hit on the counter attack, but I I don't think they'll be scared of Real Madrid. And like I I I think that all of those teams at the top of the Champions League market are more vulnerable than they've been for a long time. So I, I give it's going to be exciting, isn't it? Champions League. Yeah, so I'm looking is. forward to it. It really is because I think a lot of the middle tier sides uh, should believe that they can go you know and actually win it this year. I nicked a bit of forty Seville the other week when when it was clear that the uh. The last bits of water in the Leicester bath <laughs> yeah. were going down the plug hole. And I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Ed Quigley, have we got any price on Napoli to qualify against Real Madrid? Yeah, so um, Napoli are 11 to 5, Bruce. We're actually we're, we're quite short compared to the rest of the market there. We, um, we're, we, we want to take on Madrid. We're actually standout best price on them to qualify 3 to 10. OK, this is one of those moments in a Paddy Power postcard where we tell people to go to another company <laughs> and bet. Um, but, James, we'll go to you now. Wenger in or Wenger out? Um... Finally, I'm afraid I'm I'm, I'm Wenger out. Oh, now. really? We've got I'm you. You've turned. Yeah. What was the moment? <laughs> it's just it's just cumulative, isn't it? It's just year <laughs> after year the after the dripping year tap just, on the forehead. Yeah. It just grinds you down, and you're just like, it's just. I'll tell you the the, the thing that's really annoyed me as, as an Arsenal fan this year is you started the season with so many options in centre midfield. You're thinking, how is he going to juggle this? And you've got to this stage of the season, and and you just don't fancy any of them. They're just hopeless. There's this kind of kind of void in the centre of the park. He's trying to fill it up with double-barrelled names. Oxlade Chamberlain and Maitland Niles has, has come from nowhere to be be, be kind of uh, touted as, as a saviour. But it's just... You've had it's enough. Just, it's, it's just not found the right balance in, in midfield. You know, he plays Coquelin and Elneny uh, together, which which uh, gives them nothing. Jack has been a liability. Uh, Ramsey just never got going this season. And, you know, they, they Cause just Because all the Rangers still... He is, yeah, him, yeah. He, yeah they, you know, we we do miss him, but but at the same time, if you're title contenders, you can't be relying on a kind of little injury-prone 33-year-old or whatever he is. You know, he's he's not he's not going to play every game, and things can't just fall apart when when he's not there. Would you get rid of him now or wait till the end of the season? Um, I'd, I think wait till the end of the season. They, they no need fancy to, they, bold, <laughs> they need they need to get a plan in place, and uh, you know they, I, my concern is they're just going to try and do it on the cheap, and and, and yeah, maybe Steve Bold gets the job. But <laughs> have you been on the old A4 printer and just got yourself a little <laughs> one of those little signs that says? I've, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm googling uh, kind of laminating shops <laughs> near, near, near my near my house. Yeah. I love the thought of of um, of Milts, the sort of urbane, you know, intelligent Arsenal fans sitting there like one of those blokes that. That gets interviewed for an Arsenal <laughs> TV thing after. It's a bloody joke. Get I've rid not, of him. Yeah, I've not been asked on that yet uh, for some reason. I don't know. I, I think I need to need to get fired up for that one. Yeah, you do, mate. <laughs> I, I look I look forward to when you're on there sipping from your hip flask and <laughs> shooting from the hip. Ed Quigley, which has been the hardest football team to price up this season? Which are the ones that, when it comes to their match, they say, oh Christ, not this lot again. I cannot get them right. 
Um, I would say it's quite possibly uh, Bournemouth. I think I'm constantly getting wrong this season. Southampton would be another one that springs to mind as well. I mean, Asia are obviously very in love with uh, Southampton. And I, I've looked at analysis actually of Southampton as well. They actually should have scored about 11 or 12 more goals this season, which would have propelled them far higher up the table than, than they currently are. But Bournemouth, they're another one. I mean, like, again, Asia was kind of in love with them last season, more so than this season. But they're... Um, I mean, they're on shocking form at the minute, but uh, like they're rated similar, they're rated only slightly better than Palace. Like, but and I actually think they like that eight, they're eight to one currently for relegation. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if they got dragged into it because really the they lost Callum Wilson now, I suppose, haven't they? So yeah, Callum Wilson's out for the rest of the season as well. Yeah, he's a big blow, but um, yeah, I just I just think the, the others are showing a bit of fight now. Like, you know what I mean? So they could mm, get dragged into it. Absolutely, we'll talk we'll talk about relegation in greater depth in just a moment. Mark Langdon, who wins the Golden Boot? Yeah, well, I hope it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I hope Lukaku wins it. Um, put him up pre uh, anti post. I mean, I didn't. I'm not fancied him at any stage really, and he, he got those four against Bournemouth, and it's propelled him to the top. I, I think Harry Kane is probably the most obvious sort of one. I mean, he plays up front for the team that's currently second in the table. You know, uh, gets most of their chances from a very creative midfield. Is on penalties that you can't say about a lot of the others. He's got the form in the book. He won it uh, last season. He's right up there despite missing a chunk of the campaign. I, I think he's probably the most obvious one because Costa doesn't usually take penalties, and when he did, it wasn't very good. Lukaku's not on penalties um, for Everton. Aguero can't get in the Man City team at the moment. Just wondering about Alexis, if he's running out of puff a little bit, and there's always the option of him playing deeper if Giroud plays. So, um, Do you know, in this world of hype and everything, I think Harry Kane is actually still slightly underrated. I, I think that there's a couple of things against one being English. Um, now we used to be the stage that all English players were overrated. You think sort of the, the sort of Beckham era or whatever. Now I, I feel like everybody's sort of on the back of all English players, and it. Um, and the, I think the way that he kind of speaks as well goes against. Yeah, it doesn't him. help, does it? It doesn't Which help. Is ridiculous. He's not. He's not sort of the most suave in front of the cameras, is he? But um, no one's ever talked a ball into a net. Though, <laughs> they, have they? they haven't. I mean, it took me a long time to to come to the conclusion that he was the real deal um, but when he keeps on scoring and in big matches and stuff like that you just have to accept that he, he probably is uh, you know he's on, on the way to being a very very good um, English striker terrific player and seems a very nice lad as well I like Harry Kane very much how are Paddy Powell betting on the boot now Ed Quigley OK, so Harry Kane is favourite. He's 3-1. to one. Then you've got Zlatan at 100-30. to 30. Diego Costa at 7-2. Lukaku 4-1. to one. Sanchez 8-1. to one. Aguero 10-1. to one. Uh, Defoe's 20s. And the rest don't matter. Though I'm, I'm just after noticing we've Dimitri Payet still at the betting in 150s. Do not back that. <laughs> that's not going to happen, is it? That's, a, yeah. that's very unlikely. Yeah, you need to knock that one out. Very, very competitive, that. The old golden boot. Good stuff. Uh, James... So last night, uh, everyone tunes in at 10 o'clock for the news, you know, there's latest Brexit stuff going on, all happening. And we've got the second half of extra time in a reserve match between Leicester and Derby. It's absolutely poxy, wasn't it? What can we do to bring the magic back to the FA Cup? Do we ch- is there a format change? What can happen or do we just have to, to give up on it? I don't know. I mean, they, you know, the, the kind of regulations about playing your strongest team that they have in, in whatever the, the JPT is now and things like that is, I mean, managers still try and find a way around that. And it's, I think that's, that's incredibly difficult to police. Um, but I, I mean, I, I just think with, with, uh, I just think resting is, is a, is slightly overrated. Um, you know, for, for a, um, uh, a Premier League team coming in at the third round, there's not really that much to do to uh, to to get to the um, get to the FA Cup semi-finals and the final, whatever. So I think, I think you just need to tell tell managers to man up a bit and just um, just uh, pick proper teams. I think they rest more to give the to keep the, the non-first eleven yeah, happy them, than to yeah. than to actually rest. It's yeah, not as so much yeah, resting; it's actually giving the others a run around. Yeah, but there's yeah. something wrong. I don't know whether it's replays. We should scrap the replays or what. But I mean, last night you just thought to yourself. They can't be bothered. Neither of them. Why, sh- why should we be yeah. bothered to watch yeah. it? it was, you see, it, well, in the FA Trophy, you can come to a mutual agreement to not have a replay. Well, that's a so good idea. Mm. If I, you know, if Cambridge get Manchester United, uh, they they say, well, we, yeah. we'll have the replay. Thanks very much. But Torquay at Gate said they yeah, might say, look, yeah, let's just. So, um, that's a very good idea. I think there, right there was there, there was a game this season. Um, I think it involved Wrexham. Uh, that w- w- where they both sort of said, well, we just play it over the one. And can can you I agree mean, to just uh, buy a coin toss if you <laughs> yeah. just don't really don't fancy it at all? Yeah, yeah. at all? Yeah, or we'll just go out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, 
That's an interesting concept. I think I think something's got to happen, though, hasn't it? It's not right as it is. Uh, Eddie Q, who's going down from the Premier League? Give us the prices first, and then your three teams. Okay, so Sunderland are two to five fives at the minute. Then you've got Hull at four to five. I, I was on this podcast a few weeks ago saying Hull were one to seven, so it's an incredible turnabout they've had. Uh, you've got Crystal Palace and Borough at evens. Swansea at 15 to eight. Leicester five to two. Bournemouth eight to one. And Burnley are 11 to one. And the rest is 20 points per. Who goes? Uh, I think Sunderland would finally go through the trap door, all right, even though they have shown um, a little bit of life there last weekend, obviously beating Palace 4 0. <coughs> <laughs> um, Who else? I think, Middle, uh, I think, I think Middlesbrough will go down. I th- I th- I'm starting to think Middlesbrough could go down now as well. They're coming out. Um, we're pretty, well, I think we're, shortest, we're pretty short on them at evens at the minute. And then uh, I, don't, I don't think Palace are going to go down anyway. Yeah, I think, I think Hull might go down still yet, but um, they probably might three, but it's tentative picks there. OK, it's a fascinating relegation battle. Mark, which question do you want to answer? Yeah, I don't want that relegation one. That's that's impossible. I mean, I'll, I'll take the Arsene Wenger. OK. Um, I, I definitely think it's time uh, for him to go. I mean, I, I'd always previously, sort of up until about sort of last six months or so, felt that he had the right to decide when he wanted to go, given all that he'd done for the club. But if he's kind of just selfishly hanging on and refusing to go... I mean, they make this, they've made the same mistakes for about five years running. Uh, and all these injuries that they keep getting, I mean, there must be something that they're doing wrong because Jack Wilshere's gone to Bournemouth and is fit. Um, yeah. But isn't it just that they play intricate possession football in tight areas and get kicked uh, around no, more as a I consequence? I, no? I mean, I, I, I just did, I mean, they're, they're not even contact injuries. They get, and they're, they're like, they come out and say they're two months and then you don't see them for six yeah. months. And well, Van Persie left, um, went to United and played, played a full season. season. I Golden mean, I, I think there is, th- th- there's something they're not doing right there, but also against Watford when Wenger said, we're not mentally, we wasn't mentally prepared for the game. I mean, yeah, surely, that's a bit, <laughs> that is that, a bit, that's that, indefensible. That was the straw for yeah. me, actually, I think. That that's was. Surely <laughs> that, is down to the, that is down to the manager. And we've seen, I mean, I, I also think that, I don't know exactly how old he is now, but I think he's maybe just got a little bit old. Um, I mean, he's a lot older than, than all the, the, the managers he's fighting against. You is know, he 60 odd? Oh, it yeah. must be late, yeah, late, 60s, late 60s. Late 60s. Is um, he really? Yeah, he's, he's, out, yeah. he's up against, you know, these younger managers, Pochettino, uh, Conte, Klopp, that are just, and Guardiola. That are just, uh, they look more enthusiastic. They okay, just bring listen, the listen, brand Okay, football. fine. We get that. But and normally when I ask anyone, an Arsenal fan who, who hates Finger, all right, who do you want? They don't have a clue. But Mark, you, and I'm not patronising you, you've got the best knowledge of anyone in European football that I know I've ever heard on the radio and the media. If anyone knows who the right person to take over at Arsenal is, it's you. Uh, I, I mean, I, unrealistically, I would say Pochettino is perfect for it. But in terms of being who... Who I mean, Allegri's out there seemingly learning English. I, I think I mean he's done a very good job at Milan and Juventus. Would, would would bring a lot of sort of tactical knowledge to them if they wanted to take sort of more of a punt. I suppose took a look Dortmund. The results haven't necessarily always matched the performances, but I I think that when they're at it, they're as good as most in Europe. And you know he's part of that reason. Loves young players so I mean, and speaks. Brilliant English as well. So, I mean, there'd that, be two. Okie dokie. James, what are you going to answer? Um, I w- uh, yeah, relegation is just too difficult. I'm just swerving that one, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, Harry Kane, I agree with uh, with Mark on that. But I, and I'm interested by Ed's uh, thoughts on Southampton from a, from a bookmaking perspective. And I, I find them very difficult from a punting perspective as well, kind of game by game. I, particularly when they're at home, I, I just look at their price every week and think, think too short. And, and inevitably, when I oppose them, they, they do actually win. But I, I backed them a, a couple of weeks ago to finish bottom half at three to one. They've not been very good since then. So I'm, I'm hoping that I, that I finally, uh, finally tweet. I mean, you, you look at that top half, bottom half, and there's not many spaces left no. in the top half. I mean... Even West Brom have got a nice, nice cushion up there. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that Southampton, with with the uh, reshuffled defence, and hoping that, and and obviously a cup, uh, cup final, cup to come, final to look for. I'm hoping they'll take their eye off the ball uh, even more. And they're very short this week, and they're evens at Sunderland. I would not yeah. go near yeah. that one. Ed, which question are you going to answer? Um, I'll take the best bet for the Champions League next week. Okay. Um, I, th- I think they're playing next week anyway. Yeah, or, sorry, it's the week after, but this is a crack and bet needs to be got on pretty quickly. So uh, I, I think Monaco at seven to four. It, we are. Uh, this is like a. Po- it's like I'm promoting rivals now at this stage <laughs> on this podcast. But we are short on it. That's that's due to myself. But uh, we're seven to four on Monaco against City to qualify. I think that's an absolute. It's a cracking bet. Like Monaco are, tra- are obviously they're leading League One at the minute. They're scoring goals for fun. 
Like they've got unbelievable players. Like there's a guy on the bench calling Mbappe who's been heralded as the new Henri. Apparently Wenger's interested. Like, but they've a serious team this season. They've even got Falcao scoring. Yeah, I just think City are just too, too far too short, and there's there's definitely there's definitely value in that Monaco price to qualify. I've got a friend who bets on football for a living, and he is of exactly the same opinion as you. He absolutely adores Monaco, so that's a ringing endorsement for that. Okay, thank you very much, chaps. Let's get stuck into the Saturday action. Here's Paddy's latest offer. It's two up, you win. For all Premier League and La Liga matches, we'll pay out immediately if the team you back goes two goals up. Not available in shops, TNC Supply, 18plus, gambleaware.co.uk. That's a very good offer, that, and it might even apply to people who back Arsenal in our first live game. Might even apply, given the way things are going, to people who back Hull in our first <laughs> live game. 12.30 Saturday. Uh, Arsenal play Hull at home. Obviously, Arsenal aren't in the greatest of form right now, but Hull are doing really well under their new manager. They're absolutely flying. So, how you price this one up, Ed? Yeah, Bruce, so um, Arsenal are 2-7, to seven, Favs, obviously, and then the draw is 92, and then Hull are 10-1. to one. Not going near uh, Arsenal at two <laughs> to seven, James, are we? No, I don't think we are. No, I'm, I'm, you know, we mentioned the uh, the Watford game um, where, where Arsenal were two 0 down in uh, very early on. I think another slow start looks likely. I mean, they're just not not looking like they're they're putting teams away uh, early on. And and Hull obviously have improved despite a tough run of fixtures. Look look very good. Um, you know they've they've only actually been losing at half time in one of their last eight league games, and that was a, a 45th minute goal from Diego Costa. So um, I I like the look of the half time draw. At, uh, I think 13 to eight with Paddy Power, and even a a, a little uh, nibble at 13 to two. Hull to be leading at half time. You know Arsenal have been 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 kind of getting away with it, scoring late goals. They couldn't do that against uh, against Watford, but they, again they only woke up um, after the break. And have you got um, the season ticket for this one? Uh, I'm fortunate. I'm I'm in the office, so I don't have oh. to go to that one. I went to the the glorious winner over Burnley, uh, the 98th minute penalty. Oh, so excellent. That, that yeah. was good. But, that um, was good, wasn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, but, but the crowd could start. easily get on their back as well. Yeah, they? yeah. I mean, that, you know, there, there is frustration there, certainly. Yeah. Plus, at 12:30, it's quite quiet because all the fans have just picked. Uh, they've just taken Tabitha to lacrosse in the yeah, morning, and, yeah. and Johnny's they're ridden his pony. Getting, so stuck, stuck into the Guardian uh, books review <laughs> section, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible stereotyping. Uh, Mark, Hull, Arsenal versus Hull, what do we do I'm here? I'm going to go Hull plus two. Um, so, yeah, Arsenal to win by no more than, than one goal. I mean, even when Arsenal have been winning at home, you know, they won nil against West Brom very late, 2 1 against Burnley uh, very late on. And Hull, um, un under Marco Silva, I mean, they've got a point at Old Trafford when they, they, they nearly nicked that one as well. They've beaten Liverpool. Um, I thought they were unlucky against Chelsea. They they looked very comfortable in that game for most of it. You had, had a blatant penalty, 1-0, uh, um, you know, re refused. And he's brought in some some really good players. Um, uh, somebody like Renocchi has you know, been knocking around the Inter for, 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 for many years, uh, apparently played quite well against Liverpool. And even if they lose the game, I think they can be quite competitive. And the way Arsenal are playing, I think it's very difficult to pat them at two to seven. OK, mate. Do you know, last week, Hull versus Liverpool, I thought, right, I definitely want to get with Hull some way, shape or form. Do you know what I did? I backed both teams to score. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most pathetic bet I've ever, ever had. <laughs> that, that miss from Coutinho couldn't have gone down well. Oh, then in, in absolutely the... ridiculous. Uh, Ed, what do you think is going to happen here? Do you agree with the lads or do you think Arsenal will get back on form and romp to victory? Yeah, I know. I echo exactly what both of them said. Pretty much, I'm, I have Hull plus two here at five to six as well. Like uh, Hull have obviously improved enormously under Silva. We've actually had a few requests for Marco Silva to be next Arsenal manager. I don't, I don't know about that. But um, just the other thing, I suppose you mentioned. We've mentioned Renocchia there. He got man of the match last weekend against Liverpool in his day. I think it was his debut anyway. First but, uh, start, yeah. First start, start, yeah. And like they've signed Kamil Grosicki as well, who was, um, who was, he was pretty impressive in the Euros. I thought for Poland too. So decent signings. They've absorbed the losses of Snodgrass and uh, Livermore definitely there and uh, just the other thing is Silva uh, last season went, went with Olympiacos to Arsenal and they would have actually probably been at similar prices and they, they beat Arsenal at the Emirates too so yeah I, I think uh, Hull plus two is a very very good bet here at five to six I used to know all these people are oh, Pinocchio and Riccini <laughs> and oh, I've lost it I've lost it right 5.30 Liverpool versus Tottenham the game of the weekend this um, and Ed you're about to tell us about the price is for this match, and there is a massive rick here. Um, is there? Uh, yeah. Okay, so Liverpool are 5-4, to four, the draw is 12-5, to five, and Tottenham are 11-5. to five. Yeah, well, you're actually the right side of this one, but some bookmakers are going as big as uh, 
12 to 5. I think I even saw a bit of 5 to 2 Tottenham. That is completely and utterly wrong. Tottenham, massive price here, aren't they, James? Uh, they are, actually. Yeah. Oh, I, think, I think I always I always back Tottenham in these games, and they usually draw one all, it seems to me. But, yeah, Tottenham draw no bet, certainly. I mean, the, the one thing I was looking at, Liverpool's record against against top-half teams, they've, they've not lost in 11 games against teams who, who start the weekend in the top half. But then you just look at their their, their recent form, and, and it's it's got to be it's got to be Tottenham really, um, you know they they um uh, they were massively outplayed at Manchester City, but um still managed to nick a draw there, and I I, I just think in terms of solidity, I think Tottenham Tottenham and, and a draw no bet wager are um absolute match made in heaven. Well, price is the draw no bet Tottenham for those who want to take the slightly less adventurous route, Ed. Okay, so the draw no bet for on Tottenham is eleven to eight. Oh, 11 to 8, that's yeah. massive. Mark, what do you think is going to happen No, I'm not as confident. Not having it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I thought the... Um I mean, I, I don't think there's much between the two teams, um, really. So, I mean, I thought with home advantage, Liverpool were, um, I'm not saying they're a great bet, but I thought they were a, a fair enough price. I mean, there's not many, I mean, they, they've only lost once in their last 19 home matches at Liverpool. And usually when they've had a break, they're at their best. Um, you know, so they, they've had a full week to prepare for this game. I think you can say the same about Tottenham. But, I mean, they've they beaten Man City at home. Um, I thought they should have beaten Chelsea as well. I, Spurs away from home, I mean, they lost against Chelsea despite playing quite well. They lost at Manchester United. I didn't think they played well that day. They also, against Man City, I mean, how they've nicked them. I mean, you, you, positively, yeah, they got a point, but they were absolutely battered for like about 80 minutes. And yet the game. City goals both came from errors. Yeah, they, they did. Um, I, I think that was just down to City's wastefulness, though, wasn't it, really? I, mean, I love it how when Man United win and yeah. play badly, everyone says, oh, that's a sign they of a did. great team. When Tottenham do it, everyone's like, oh, they were so lucky. Yeah, I mean, but I, I just think when Tottenham have got players missing, they're nowhere near as effective. Danny Rose and Vertonghen in that back four is huge for them. They've lost six games this season, Tottenham, and in five of those, at least one of Rose or Vertonghen was missing. I mean, you go back to the poor Champions League uh, performances against Monaco and Leverkusen. Rose missed out both. I mean, he's not only one of their best defenders, he's also sort of one of their best attackers. I mm. think he's a massive um, loss for them. And I, I, I just think at Anfield, um, Liverpool are not a bad price odds against against anybody, really. Righty ho. Ed, what do you think? Um, yeah, I, I, I think the lines. I actually think the lines about right here myself. Like, uh, if Liverpool get a little bit bigger, similar to Mark, I'd probably be tempted by Liverpool. Like, and as uh, Mark just said as well, like I have here in my notes, it's like Spurs away form against the uh, you know the great A sides or top six, I suppose. Yeah, it's really average. I mean, as Mark just said, Chelsea United losses should have lost the City, drew with Arsenal, and like uh, the other thing I I'd say the way I'm going to play it though right now anyway at the, at the prices is all Liverpool's home games against the top six have been under two and a half uh, two and a half goals this season, and I expect this game to be no different. I think the five to six looks value here. Also, given that I expect it to be under two and a half, I think the draw twelve to five is a massive runner here too, and particularly. Like at the current prices, anyway. If but if Liverpool get out to about eleven to eight, I'll be I'll be back in that, all right, yeah. Okay, let's get Saturday's best bets. This will not be beaten. James Milton, you go first. I'm uh, dipping into League One, Gillingham against Port Vale. Now you have to bear with me here. Gillingham haven't won in seven. They're odds on, but I think this is a great opportunity for them. Had a couple of decent draws against Sheffield United and Bradford recently, and Vale really are. Um, plummeting towards the uh, relegation zone. They've lost five of their last seven away. So I, I think Gillingham, despite not winning in a while, this is this is their moment. Let's do a they played for both clubs, Gillingham and Port Vale. That's a tough one, isn't it? <sighs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I think it's about the hardest one there is, so we'll pass on that one. Mark? Um, I, I've got down there, in terms of weekend, Lazio to beat AC Milan is absolutely the, the, the definite best bet on Monday. In terms of Saturday, I'm going to go for Barnet or draw double chant at Colchester. Um, I just think Colchester switched to a three at the back system, worked really well for them. Recent performances suggest they're just going backwards. Um, you know, I think teams have maybe worked that one out. They've had a chance to look at it. Barnet um, have actually, I mean, they were beaten last week by Mansfield, but I think Mansfield are really on the up. I'm looking more back to the away performance at Carlisle when they dominated the game against Carlisle. We're down to 10 men, came away with a point. I think that should be the sort of least of their, their, their targets away at Colchester. OK, Ed, who do you like? 
Um, I'm going to go with Derby at 4-5 to five to beat Bristol City. I mean, Derby, obviously, since Stephen McLaren have, uh, has taken over, have shot up the table. They're unbeaten since September at home, and back then that was Steve McLaren, or sorry, uh, Nigel Pearson. Since then, they've uh, they've won seven, drawn two. Bristol City's away form is shocking. They've only won one away all season. have lost their last six in a row. Derby, I think Derby made enough changes last night as well for the extra time not to not to have a negative impact like Tom Ince wasn't playing, Darren Bent wasn't playing. Uh, allegedly, I didn't see it now, but they were unlucky against Newcastle too last weekend not to get anything. So Derby at four to five for me is a cracking bet. OK, of all the bullshit theories that people have about football, I don't bet the draw because neither team wants a draw or, you know, they, they need the points so they'll win. The one I do buy into is that when a team's got a big cup match on the horizon... I think that they can be a little bit vulnerable in the previous game. So I'm going down to the National League and I'm going to tip Solihull Moors at 9-5 to five to beat Sutton United, who have a very big game, obviously, against Arsenal the following week. I only actually realised this season that Soli they are actually called Solihull Moors and not Solihull Motors. Yeah. I always assume there's like a Nissan plant or something in Solihull. I didn't... You're not the only one. I thought exactly the same did thing. You? Yeah, did I you? Did you think they were called Solihull Motors? Yeah, I did. Oh, thank yeah, God for that. They do have it abbreviated in the paper sometimes, and so it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, ambiguous. Have you ever driven past Solihull or been there? Indeed, <laughs> I've I've never been to Birmingham. Well, I mean, it just doesn't strike me as somewhere with moors. So I'm I just find that very peculiar. I've Anyway, I'm hoping that they're going to win. I love the way win. James said he'd never been to Birmingham. They're yeah, so that's incredible. Right. <laughs> yeah, you've, well, been, that, you've been to Goa, the Galapagos <laughs> Islands, Bolivia, everywhere, but you've never been to, to the, the second Beirut. city. Just never <laughs> had. Have Beirut. you been to Beirut? I, yeah, I went on holiday to Beirut. <laughs> you've been you've never been to Birmingham. <laughs> No, I just never, never had cause to go there. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I, I must admit, I've only ever been there for football at Villa Park and Hall Green Dogs. So I don't, I couldn't tell you much about it. You been, Mark? Yeah, I was in a stag do um, back in the summer to Birmingham. Um, yeah, I, I assumed it would be rubbish, but it was really good. Um, was it? Yeah, they've got like this strip of bars <coughs> that you could almost sort of feel like you're in Magaluf or something. It's incredible. Um, you can put Mark's quotes on the on the, the tourist <laughs> yeah, board posters. Kind of, I assumed <laughs> it was going to be rubbish, but it was all right. But it was just like Magaluf. <laughs> yeah. Have you been to Birmingham, Ed? No, I never made it to Birmingham. No, no. Okay, right. Sunday's game's coming up. Here's Paddy's latest offer. It's two up, you win. For all Premier League and La Liga matches, we'll pay out immediately if the team you back goes two goals up. Not available in shops, TNC supply, 18 plus, gambleaware.co.uk. Welcome back, Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon, James Milton and Paddy Powers, Ed Quigley. We're looking at Sunday's live Premier League games and at 1.30. The first of them takes place at Turf Moor. It's Burnley versus Chelsea. How do you bet, Ed Quigley? So Burnley are 15 to 2, the draw is 7 to 2, and Chelsea are 2 to 5. Stick with you, Ed. What's going to happen? Uh, well, like Burnley's home form is phenomenal. Like they're actually they actually sit third in the Premier League table in terms of home form. They're they're like Champions League equivalents there. But um, and Chelsea sit first in the away table uh, in terms of their form. I mean, against similar opposition, Burnley have have done well. I guess. I mean, they beat Liverpool obviously the start of season two 0 they they got mugged by Arsenal in the 90th minute as well uh, in that game um, at the Turf Moor, and then like they only lost by one to City too, and like for, like Chelsea despite their dominance of the away of the eight away games they've won, only four of them have come by more than one goal margin, and I just think I just think Sean Dyche would be looking at the red, or the teams below him and just going just just get a point out of this or aim for a point and sit deep. Now they have a Hendrick and Defoe are obviously decent enough blows in terms of midfield. They're both out, but there's rumours circling around the internet too that um, Hazard may be rested and Louise as well. I don't know why they'd rest them, but uh, allegedly there, it, there's talk of it anyway. So yeah, I'd fan, I do fancy Chelsea to win, but I think it'll be close. So I'll be back in Chelsea to win by one at 23 to 10. An internet rumour. That's the modern equivalent of some bloke down the pub, isn't it? Um, yeah. What do you think? What are you going to do here, James? It's a, yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, Chelsea's biggest test of the season, I suppose, mm. isn't it? Going to Turf Moor, the way, the way Burnley have been playing. So, you know, real test of Chelsea's title credentials. Um, and I think I think Chelsea and, and both teams to score could be the way to go here. I think You know, you can, can see it kind of being 2-1 or something. Uh, Burnley, um, yeah, were, were terrific against Arsenal, beat, beat Liverpool, as, as Ed mentioned, uh, early on in the season. You know, they've not really been uh, been kind of overwhelmed by uh, by by these kind of um, teams, but um, you know, Chelsea obviously far stronger. And um, uh, yeah, Burnley pose a, a decent goal threat, but um, yeah, I think I think a, a narrow Chelsea win. But Chelsea and, and both teams to score for me. Mark uh, Chelsea to win by one goal. I agree with Ed. Um, I mean, you mentioned there that Arsenal and City only scraped uh, home at Turf Moor, even away from home. Um, you know, you have a look at Burnley. 
lost very late on at Arsenal, lost 2 1 to City. They were down to, to 10 men, City, for a long time. Lost 2 1 at Spurs and played pretty well as well at White Hart Lane. Their last five defeats have all been by one goal. I, not the sort of team that you expect to collapse, particularly at home. I mean, they did at the Hawthorns, but other than that, been pretty competitive most of the season. And as I've continue to say on this uh, postcast Chelsea just happy to get the job done any which way they can and um, I saw Jose Mourinho mention that last week when he said you know when he played counter-attacking football like that everybody moaned nobody's moaning about the teams currently first and second in the Premier League playing um, that that style I'm, I'm not sure you can it's probably because they're not managed by an arse <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is that I mean I'm not sure you can sort of mention that when you just draw nil nil against Hull yourself oh, but, who um, cares what that irritating I, 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 I think I thought it was quite interesting because nobody's mentioned Chelsea being quite boring this season I actually think there have been times when they have been quite dull oh uh, yeah no you I, know, I, and, I think you're right um, yeah. I, I, and it hasn't it seems to be that nobody's really gone for that angle no, yet. No, um, no, that's true. That will come. Yeah, well, it will do because people will get bored of them winning by one goal and sort of. But it's been a very profitable angle for you, hasn't it, Mark? Yeah, you've, you've, you've exploited that one yeah, quite a bit no, this season. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think the market. Um, I mean, because it comes sort of from the, the, the goals and and the win price there. Um, I, I just think it's the best way of getting with um, Chelsea, really, particularly away from home. How would you like Sean Dyche as Arsenal's next manager? Uh, well, he'd, he'd get them, get them set up, get them hard to beat, wouldn't he? Yeah. Um, is Would you that... prefer him to Wenger? Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, four o'clock. Uh, Where'd your view yet, Ed, on this? I can't remember. Yeah, we did, uh, didn't we? Yeah, Chelsea, yeah, 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 we did. Sorry, yeah, Chelsea by one. Okay, four o'clock. Swansea versus Leicester. One of many relegation six-pointers that we're going to have between now and the end of the season. I guess Swansea are just about jollies now, aren't they, Ed? Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah. They're 7-5, to five, the draws 23-10, to 10, and Leicester 2-1. to one. What's going to happen here, Ed? Uh, well, Leicester have only kept one clean sheet away all season. Swansea have only kept two at home all season. Despite that, I don't know if it's going to be a goal fest. I think it's going to be very tentative from both sides. It's obviously a massive game, as you just said there. Uh, it's a, it is a very tricky game to call. Uh, Swansea have obviously improved or, uh, uh, like a lot under um, Clement. Like, and um, I think just they're in a much better place than Leicester confidence-wise, though Leicester might have derived a bit of confidence from last night. Um, Sigurs and Llorente both look up for the fight. And uh, Narsing is um, a great acquisition too, I think, in the January transfer window. Yeah, I, I, I'd be going with Swansea here, but it's, uh, I wouldn't be going massive stakes at all. Like, So, yeah, Swansea at 7-5 for me. I agree with you. I'd be going with Swansea. I disagree with you. I will be going with massive stakes, I think Swansea are a good thing here. What do you think, James? Yeah, I think Swansea, uh, uh, you know, the way they've played in the last couple of weeks, um, it should should be confident about this fixture. I'm, I'm not sure I'd be backing them at, at, at that price, but I'm, I like the look of um, Alfie Mawson in the first goal scorer market. Uh, Paddy Power offering a, a standout and, and very generous, I think, 30 to 1. He's uh, the centre back, scored eight in, um, in 49 starts for Barnsley, got two in his last five for Swansea. Uh, missed a good chance uh, against Manchester City actually last last weekend, and um, and yeah, he's a he's a real threat from uh, from dead ball situations. So um, uh, yeah, he's he's my my bet for this game. Alfie Mawson, first goal scorer for James. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I mean, uh, Sigurdsson's delivery, isn't it? Is absolutely uh, on point as well. I I, I like Swansea. Um, I mean, if we just ignore for the moment that Leicester won the league last season, if we can uh, just gloss over that. I mean, you know, the season before, they were massively involved in a relegation battle. Yeah, this time two years ago, they were <coughs> virtually down and yeah, out, Yeah, they, they were. And, um, you know, now they're in another relegation battle. So I don't see, you know, how they can be considered, you know... Um, better than Swansea necessarily, you know, given if they were playing uh, a neutral venue. So I think home advantage here um, could be key. Swansea have won three of their last five. The defeats were against Arsenal and Manchester City. Even against Arsenal, it finished in a runaway Gunners victory. But for half an hour, Swansea were by far the better team. Just couldn't get a lot the of individual errors, I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, I, I think they are slowly... Um, eradicating those um, you know Paul Clement had a very good defensive record when he was manager of Derby they couldn't quite get going in, in the final third and I think he, he he's done a solid job so far and 
Leicester haven't won away from home this season. They've also got a Champions League game. Now, they shouldn't be concentrating on the Champions League coming up. But I wouldn't be surprised if they were, and particularly some of those players that have maybe got the, the, these massive contracts. There seems to be now a big pay disparity between the top earners at Leicester and some of those that won the title. I think that, that, that that's a problem for There's them. There's a lot of chat about unrest, isn't there? And Ranieri's Obviously, lost the yeah, some of those, the, the, the headline players got massive new contracts and some of those around them that did sort of just as much in terms of winning the title didn't get the new contracts. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an issue there. I'm looking forward to the final scene of that Jamie Vardy movie with him running out of Scotland uh, in August. That's going to be good. Right, let's look at the Monday night game. Here's Paddy's latest offer. It's two up, you win. For all Premier League and La Liga matches, we'll pay out immediately if the team you back goes two goals up. Not available in shops, TNC Supply, 18 plus, gambleaware.co.uk. We've got Monday night football this week for the first time in what seems like absolutely ages. And it's Bournemouth versus Man City. So it should be one of those games where I end up buying the passes and probably doing my brains. But it should be an attractive old fixture. Man City obviously going to be jollies to such an extent that I should think they're pretty long odds on, aren't they, uh, Ed Quigley? Yeah, Bournemouth are 6-1. to one, The draw is 18-5 to five, and City are 4-9. to 4-9. to nine. Uh, James, Bournemouth... Struggling a little bit right now. Um, is that just a blip or are they getting sucked into it? I, I think they are. Yeah, I can't remember what, what price Ed uh, gave them at their relegation. Eight, about to, eight one, to one, was it? Said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, there's obviously a, a lot of teams below them, but the way they're, the way they're defending um, is, is, is a huge concern. Obviously, he's conceded six at, at Everton. And, you know, it, you, you looked at the, the highlights of that game and Lukaku's goals. Yeah, he took them all very well, but he had so much time and, and space to... Well, Barclay to, uh, had so much time, he well, celebrated, yeah, exactly. didn't he? took his shirt exactly, off before yeah. he'd scored. Yeah, that was they? extraordinary. Um, I like that. It was good, <laughs> that wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, good, good bit of theatre, yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, having conceded six at Everton, I think they're not really going to be looking forward to, to facing City. Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking at kind of 3-1 uh, and 4-1 City. I think there there's, there's, there's just have to be goals in this game. Um Eight of Bournemouth's last twelve have been over three and a half. They just they just look soft, really, don't they? Mm. Um, you know, and they obviously beat Liverpool four three. Had the the three all when they when they they threw away that that lead against Arsenal. You know, they 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 are going for it against uh, against the bigger teams, but they're generally they're they're getting punished. A couple of fancy correct scores for James. What about you, Mark? I was just looking at Man City to win and both teams to score. Um, really, I. I mean, City, um, even when they dominate, rarely keep clean sheets. It's, um, I think they are getting there slowly, but, you know, even Swansea scored, um, you know, we mentioned before the, the Tottenham game when they absolutely dominated and conceded um, twice. Um, but they're, they're now playing the best football in the Premier League this season. I think against Spurs and West Ham, it was just unbelievable. I didn't see the, the Swansea game. I was travelling back from Germany. But, um, look, it sounds like they absolutely dominated um, again for an hour be, um, before Swansea came back into it. I, I just think he's he's sort of found the solution to the team, really. The, the what do you make of Jesus? Yeah, he's um, he's been the saviour, hasn't he, so he far? Has, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, he just plays he plays what Guardiola wants of a centre-forward, whereas Aguero, um, for all Aguero's brilliance, he doesn't track back and work off the ball quite like um, Jesus has so far. Um, I think Sane, Sterling, De Bruyne... Silver, it, it's a magnificent sort of four, and then Yaya Toure is actually they found a good role for him just sitting there. Fernandinho, the new right back, um, was a, a definite concern area for them. I think that those full back positions, um, I, I shouldn't bought... have been, should it? I mean, they've got they've got two good right backs and uh, yeah, two I'm good not, left backs. I'm not sure, they? I'm not sure about the right backs. I don't really like Sanya nor Zabaleta. I, I think I think Zabaleta's best days are behind him. Bournemouth really struggled since Aki left when, when he when he left for Chelsea. Um, it feels like that they've fallen apart defensively. Obviously, Callum Wilson's a blow up front. Still got some. Some. I mean, for all that they were terrible against Everton, um, Robles made a couple of massive saves at three two that could have nicked them a point. Um, you know, they, they've scored many goals against Liverpool and Arsenal at three, in, in, uh, and so. Um, I think they can score against City, but it could be like a three-one or something like that. Okay, no, uh, Ed, what price is three-one, four-one City, and City to win both teams to score, please? Okay, so three-one is ten to one, and four-one is nineteen to one, and two of them Dutch pays six to one, and, right, and City to win and both teams to score is nine to five. 
Nine to five. What do you think is going to happen here? Eddie? Yeah, like like City do look to be improving a lot the last few weeks. Like definitely since the Everton game where they got thumped. Um, like Jesus, if he's keeping like the way I see it, if, if Jesus is keeping uh, Aguero at the side, he must be phenomenal. Like and uh, yeah, you can back him at evens um, any time, which I think is a cracking bet should he start. And again, seven to two as well. First goal score is probably worth a dabble too if he starts. Just like yeah, like Bournemouth have conceded. Um, they're obviously in awful form. They're winless in their in the last six in all comps and they've conceded nineteen goals in in those games. Like there's something yeah, I think the loss of Aki's been huge. I know they tried to sign him during the window, during the January transfer window again, but um obviously Chelsea didn't um let him go. But yeah, I think yeah, they've got big problems coming I think Bournemouth are right. Are you Jesus or Jesus? Um, I think for for headline purposes, Jesus. I think it's Jesus. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, you don't say Henry, do you, for Thierry Henry? No, I know. I just I think it's just a footballer called Jesus is just. <laughs> I really like that. Oh, quick! They play for both clubs: Bournemouth, Man City. I've got one. I've got one. Uh, yes. Sylvan Distan. Well in, well in. Now, Mark, tell us all about your hipster trip to Germany. What, what games did you see? Uh, watched Hamburg versus Leverkusen on, on the Friday night and drank five pints during the game as did well. You? Yeah, it was wow. um, fantastic. Strong lager? Or? Yeah, it was strong lager as well. I didn't realise sort of, you know, until we sort of... Um, sort of went to leave the stadium, just um, the five pints had taken their toll. You started punching police <laughs> yeah. horses and all um, that sort of thing. And then on the Saturday night, Dortmund against Leipzig. Oh, uh, wow. Were well, you was, in the wall? I uh, wasn't in the wall, no, because uh, there was five of us, including two. <coughs> like, my son was there as well, so the wall was no good for us, really. Um, the only downside was I backed Dortmund to score over one and a half goals. And if you didn't see the game, uh, I mean, they missed. I think it was like three or four one on ones at oh, one nil. But no. um, still, still couldn't ruin what was a brilliant trip. And was it? Did Frankie enjoy it? He did. Yeah, he, he loved the. Um, you he won't be able to take him to South End no, again. No, no, the, the, the <laughs> definite uh, atmosphere differential. He also loved. We went to Mini Wonderland on the Friday, uh, which is a just the best museum I've ever been to. I usually I find that wouldn't be a long list, though, would it? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, museums go in the same sort of um, vegetables, categories, films. vegetables <laughs> and salad. Um, and I went to the, the, the German Football Museum on Sat on Sunday and saw, saw the World Cup for the first really? time. Did yeah, they have so any Diddy memorabilia, scratched up betting slips or anything? <laughs> no, there was no, there was no, uh, no, no, no Diddy a man stuff, but plenty, plenty of others. Like I say, and it was the first time I'd ever seen the World Cup, so I was, I was quite impressed with that. Fantastic, excellent. Jolly good. OK, chaps, thank you very much indeed. We'll be back next Thursday with another Racing Post football postcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. Check out Paddy Power's new and exclusive Cash Card Plus, available to use online, at ATMs, or even down the local. Paddy Power, you beauty.